What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out how Vin Diesel exposed The Rock's fragile ego. Now, we've heard over the years Vin Diesel and The Rock, they definitely had some issues with each other, especially involving the uh the fast and the furious franchise once he got involved uh i believe the studio was really high up on the rock's presence and then they ended up creating that spin-off show with the rock and jason statham uh and i believe that um vin diesel may not have been the biggest fan of that and just stuff that's happened on set and their personal issues that they've had with each other we've heard about it so we're gonna check this out yes it's not fully wrestling related but it does have arguably one of the the greatest wrestlers of all time in this particular video the rock now goes by the final boss um in wwe so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man Years, Dwayne The Rock Johnson carefully crafted a larger than life superhero persona that wakes up earlier than anyone, eats more than anyone, works out harder than anyone, has more success than anyone, and yet still is a gentle, lovable family man. On the big screen, he always beats up the bad guys, never uh -huh. dies, and every movie ends happily ever after. Maintaining this near perfect persona is unsustainable, and in 2016, except in the Doom movie, don't forget that. He ended up being the bad guy in the, in the Doom movie. Honestly, that movie wasn't really that good, except for like the last 10 minutes of the, the POV shot. That was fucking fire. But never forget, he was a bad guy. And it didn't end well for him. Sixteen, <laughs> The Rock made one decision that he deeply regretted. This decision slowly started the unraveling of his career and reputation. You see, there was only one man in Hollywood who had an edge on The Rock, and that was Vin Diesel. Vin had the multicultural appeal, the rough and tough exterior with a soft side that people adored. And to put the icing on- And never forget, family. <laughs> on the cake, he has just a little more box office success. Damn. Vin Diesel made Dwayne Johnson's blood boil. No matter how hard The Rock worked, Vin just seemed to have one up on him. And Vin loved to rub it in Dwayne's face. Mm. Today we're going to deep dive into the ultimate ego war between two of Hollywood's beloved bald badasses. <laughs> bald the only bad battle asses. where The Rock <laughs> could not control the outcome. In 2004, the battle of the bald men. <laughs> Or the Rock's Hollywood career was not going to plan. He quit nope. wrestling to go into acting full time, mm -hmm. but failed to hit big. From 2004 to 2006, he starred in Walking Tall, which was received well by fans, but hated by critics. He had throwaway roles in the crime comedy mm -hmm. Be Cool and the film adaptation of the popular video game Doom, which failed to break even financially. Yeah. He had the comedy thriller Southland Tales and his first lead acting role in Gridiron Gang, which performed a little bit better financially, but none of these films indicated that The Rock had a promising film career ahead of him. Mm -hmm. Even though he saw himself becoming an action star, he was only finding success in kid-friendly films yep. like Walt Disney's The Game Plan and Race to Wichita Mountain, along with Get Smart and Tooth Fairy, all of which made over $100 million at the box office. In addition to The Rock's career looking unpredictable, the Fast and Furious franchise needed a rebrand if they wanted to see increased yep. box office success. The first three films, which many diehard fans of the series consider to be the best, particularly Tokyo Drift, all were centered around car culture and attracted car enthusiasts. Yes, it did. Back when the series paid attention to detail, I love how they show us Dom approaching the turn, downshifting to second, and then clutch popping to break the wheels loose for the drift. Yeah, it it it, it literally catered to car it it car enthusiasts. It birthed, if you want to be honest, it birthed the car scene that we had seen around the 2000 bro not to say people weren't into cars but they've really popularized it to the point where people legitimately you started seeing people with <laughs> fucking lights under their cars you know led lights under their cars and and having these foreign builds and stuff like that they this franchise initially birthed more car enthusiasts going forward to be honest with you so and you could tell they cared. It was about street racing for the most part until it became espionage uh, spy movies. 
<laughs> Man, I wish they still made movies like this. The fourth film, Fast and Furious, still featured many elements of street racing culture, but upped the action scenes to a new level. Yeah. Explosions, foot chases, fighting crime. Yeah. This was a test to see if they could slowly move away from car culture, and it was a big hit, yeah, securing uh -huh. $360 million at the worldwide box office, making it the most successful film of the franchise at that point. It's also important to understand that Vin Diesel was the main character of the very first film. Mm -hmm. Then he denied to participate in the second film and only made a minor cameo in the third film, mm -hmm. but he came back strong in the fourth film to a huge success. I'm not suggesting Vin Diesel is the reason why the fourth film was so successful, but from there he became an integral part of the production and storyline. Family. Vin Diesel's production company, One Race Films, took the reins from Universal Pictures to maintain creative control over future films. Diesel worked closely with screenwriter Chris Morgan to produce a story arc to further explore and develop his character. Diesel was clearly very passionate about the franchise, mm -hmm. he had been there from the beginning, and he felt like he knew what was best for the franchise going forward. This dynamic seemed to work well until another successful actor slash producer joined the Fast team and felt his work ethic and vision was better than Vin's, which led to a feud that caused one of them to leave the franchise as a whole. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Join the millions of like fans that played on video, Underdog man. last year. Now using promo code PATRICKCC to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash and a free pick. Thanks, Underdog. While developing the fifth iteration of the series, Universal deliberately departed from the street racing theme to transform the franchise yep. into a heist action series that happened to have a little theme around cars. Yeah. Universal did this in hopes of drawing in a larger, more mainstream audience that might otherwise be turned off by the heavy emphasis on cars and car culture. With just one car race, Fast Five is considered the transitional film in the series, yes, placing greater focus on action sequences, brawls, gunfights, and the central heist. Fast Five follows shit was actually pretty good i enjoy fast five <laughs> it was a guilty popcorn movie like fest like everything that you want in an action flick you got it get you some popcorn and go out with your buddies this was a good one even though there's some plot holes and things really don't make sense it was entertaining and to see the practical effects that they use with cars this was good and the introduction of the rock helped tremendously too this was a fun movie, man. Follows Dominic Toretto after he is freed from a prison transport bus by Brian and his sister Mia. Together, they flee to Rio de Janeiro to avoid capture. In Rio, the protagonists consider carrying out a heist, targeting a corrupt businessman. They assemble a team that was reminiscent of what Marvel Studios would do with the Avengers. Yeah, Their team much. consists of characters who were introduced in previous films, including Tyrese's Roman Pierce, Ludacris's Tej Parker, uh -huh. Sung. Kang's Han Lu, and Gal Gadot's Giselle Yashar. As the crew plan and execute the heist, they must contend with both local law enforcement and a ruthless federal agent, Luke Hobbs, portrayed by Dwayne Johnson, who is determined to bring them to justice. This role was crucial in revitalizing The it Rock's worked. career. In 2010, he decided he was going to risk everything. No more family-friendly movies, shave his head bald, and magically put on 30 pounds of lean muscle <laughs> to depict himself as the intimidating I like how he said magically just put on 30 pounds of muscle out of nowhere. If you look at The Rock's earlier movies and then you look at like round Fast Five and after that, well, close to around that time in Fast Five and then after that, you'd be like, this was the same guy? How? <laughs> what happened? Intimidating badass that audiences hadn't seen since his wrestling days. Luckily for him, it didn't take long for him to land this hit. Not only was he cast in the genre he so greatly desired, but he was also an antagonist, yeah. which is extremely uncharacteristic for The Rock. For the first time in the franchise's history, Fast Five received overwhelmingly positive mm -hmm. reviews, mainly due to its adrenaline-pumping action sequences, jaw-dropping stunts, and great acting performances. It secured $640 million in the world 
worldwide box office, which was over double the previous film's revenue. Plus, Fast Five is widely regarded by fans and critics as the best one of the series. Fast. A review from Empire Magazine praised Johnson's performance, saying, How to reignite an aging franchise? Drop the rock on it. Dwayne Johnson hulks through the movie, leaving testosterone trails in his wake. Yep. It was overwhelmingly agreed upon that The Rock's Luke Hobbs was the perfect dance partner for Vin Diesel's yep. Dominic Toretto. And the studio delved deeper into their complex relationship with Fast and Furious 6. Mm -hmm. The film picks up where Fast Five left off, with Toretto, O'Connor, and their crew living as fugitives following their successful heist in Rio de Janeiro. The story unfolds as Hobbs recruits Dominic and his team to help take down a skilled mercenary organization led by Owen Shaw, who is wreaking havoc across Europe. In exchange for full pardons, the crew agrees to join forces with Hobbs to stop Shaw, who has assembled a team of highly skilled drivers and operatives. To label the film as a success would be an understatement. Mm. Fast and Furious 6 saw similar positive reviews to its yeah. predecessor and grossed over $788 million worldwide. <laughs> Furious 7 would be filmed immediately after Fast 6 with a single story running through both films. Vin Diesel confirmed that the screenplay for the sixth installment needed to be split with writing for the two films occurring simultaneously. We have to pay off this story. We have to service all of these character relationships. And when we started mapping all that out, it just went beyond 110 pages. The studio said, you can't fit all that story in one damn movie. Yeah. Despite being filmed back to back, Furious 7 came out years later in 2015. The film follows Dom and his team as they face off against a new enemy, Deckard Shaw, mm -hmm. who seeks revenge for his brother. After a devastating attack on their home, the team sets out to find Deckard, who is hunting them down one by one. Furious 7 received generally positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The film was praised for its thrilling action sequences, mm -hmm. emotional depth, and heartfelt tribute to Paul Walker, who mm -hmm. tragically passed away midway through filming. At the box office, Furious ooh, 7 ooh, would be ooh, the first ooh, film ooh, in the franchise. Yep. After Paul Walker died, and, and they did a beautiful uh, emotional send-off tribute to him, you know, a lot of people wanted to see how this movie was going to play out without, you know, Paul Walker being with us anymore. And it was a good movie, bro. It, you know, it's just one of those films. I'm not going to lie to you. I never thought I would tear up in a Fast and the Furious film. But this one got me, bro. Obviously, because of Paul Walker's death and how beautifully they did it. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because they did a such a fantastic job with that movie. And you see why it grossed over a billion dollars. You understand why. To surpass one billion dollars, grossing over 1.5 billion worldwide. And despite Vin Diesel and The Rock being considered equally as important to the Fast franchise, outside of the series, they had drastically different careers. Johnson became one of the highest paid action stars uh -huh. because of the series. The same can't be said for Diesel. Johnson appeared in several blockbuster films like Journey 2, The Mysterious Island, G.I. Joe, Retaliation, yep. Hercules, and San Andreas, yep. all of which surpassed $200 million at the worldwide box office. Diesel, on the other hand, struggled to find anything substantial. Babylon AD bombed at the box office and was destroyed by film critics. Mm -hmm. The Chronicles of Riddick and Riddick, the second and third installments of the Chronicles of Riddick franchise, left fans with mixed opinions. The last Witch Hunter didn't make enough to break even at the box office uh -huh. and receive less than stellar reviews. Triple X Return of Xander Cage, the third installment in the Triple X film series, stood out as the only film in his filmography outside of the Fast and Furious franchise to break even at the box office, grossing over $346 million worldwide. For Johnson, it was the complete opposite. Yep. Nearly every film he starred in in the 2010s was a box office success. Yep. On top of that, he even made a brief return to the wrestling ring. The Rock's Hollywood takeover was a huge success, and it kind of made the Fast and Furious franchise seem like it was a second priority to him. His overwhelming success in Hollywood may have made him feel like he knew the right way to do things and maybe he should call the shots. Yeah. On the other hand, the franchise was seemingly all that Vin Diesel had, which understandably made him super protective over the creative vision. Of course. But The Rock followed Vin's lead for long enough. 
and he was tired of it. So he decided to make an Instagram post that he would later deeply regret. On August 8th, 2016, Johnson posted a lengthy, now deleted Instagram post in which he praised his female co-stars as well as the Fate of the Furious crew, but called out some of his male co-stars without referring to anyone by name. There's no other franchise that gets my blood boiling more than this one, Johnson wrote. My female co-stars are always amazing, and I love them. My male co-stars, however, are a different story. Some yeah. conduct themselves as stand-up men and true professionals, while others don't. The ones that don't are too chicken sh to do anything Oof. about it anyway. Candy asses. When you watch this movie next April, and it seems like I'm not acting in some of the scenes, and my blood is legit boiling, you're right. An actor basically denouncing a film that they are yeah. supposed to be promoting is extremely rare. I mean, he set it up for people to go in there with a negative mindset. Yeah. This was extremely uncharacteristic for The Rock. I mean, what about family? You know, the word that was said 81 times in the Fast franchise? The media was in a frenzy trying to figure out what co-star The Rock was talking about. Fans were able to rule out Tyrese Gibson after he posted a video of The Rock singing to his 9-year-old daughter with the caption, DJ happens to be one of the most humble, down-to-earth, and professional people I've ever worked with. More importantly, he's my brother. We have never had a problem and will never have a problem. Now you have to remember that the Fast series is one of the most successful global film franchises of all time. Yeah. So while this may seem like menial drama, the media knew they had a juicy story on their hands. And it seems like they amplified the drama as various media outlets were reaching out to anyone who worked on the Fast series to get a quote and further this story. TMZ posted another article confirming that Johnson's social media rant was targeted at Vin Diesel. Yep. A quote production source said the pair reportedly butt heads in part because Vin is a producer and has made decisions that didn't sit well with the former wrestling champ. Another source explained that Vin was having problems with The Rock because he kept showing up late for production, sometimes failing to show up at all. However, there were other reports that essentially said the exact opposite, that Vin Diesel was the one who was acting like a diva specifically during the filming of Fast 7. Vin spent a whole day in his trailer one day, a source told The Hollywood Reporter. Another source told Page Six that Diesel was constantly late when we worked together. The source added that Diesel acted stuff. like a diva and has held up production before and that it's not surprising that he's the one The Rock is calling out. It's tough to know if there was actually animosity behind the scenes and now the staff is essentially choosing sides, yeah. or if these sources were just the PR teams from both actors trying to deflect blame and responsibility. Despite the animosity between them, Diesel and Johnson allegedly met on August 9th, one day after The Rock's initial Instagram post, on the Atlanta set to hash out their differences. Partly because tensions were running so high, it was almost impossible Possible to shoot scenes. Damn. Johnson seemingly addressed the issue in another Instagram post on August 11th. You guys reading this know how much I believe in the idea of team effort. That means respecting every person, their time, and their value when they step onto my set or partner with our production company. And like with any team, that's a family. There's going to be a conflict. Family is going to have differences of opinion and fundamental core beliefs. To me, conflict can be a good thing when it's followed by great resolution. I was raised on healthy conflict and welcome it. And like with any family, we get better from it. At the end of the day, me and the F8 co-stars all agree on the most important thing, delivering an incredible movie to the world. While their co-stars initially remained silent about the situation, other cast members made their alliances clear. On August 12th, Tyrese posted two photos of himself with Vin Diesel, along with a lengthy message referring to him as his brother. Ludacris posted a throwback photo, including several of his Fast and Furious co-stars, minus The Rock. After the filming concluded, neither Johnson nor Diesel mentioned the feud for months. On April 4th, The Fate of the Furious had its world premiere in Berlin, during which fans who watched the film noticed that Johnson and Diesel barely shared any scenes together, and in the ones they did, it looked like they may not have shot them together, but the fans weren't even crazy for thinking this. The Rock confirmed people's speculation in an interview with Rolling Stone. That is correct, we were not in any scenes together. He added that the pair had spoken to each other on set, which included an important face-to-face -face meeting in his trailer. And what I came to realize is that we have a fundamental difference in philosophies on how we approach 
approach movie making and collaborating. It took me some time, but I'm grateful for that clarity, whether we work together again or not. What's crazy is it had Damn. been eight months since The Rock initially started this feud with Vin Diesel, and Vin never addressed it. And when Vin finally did decide to speak up, it made The Rock angrier than before. Yep. On April 7th, 2017, Ooh. Diesel addressed his rumored feud with Johnson during an interview with USA Today. I don't think the world really realizes how close we are in a weird way. I think some things may be blown out of proportion. I don't think that was his intention. I know he appreciates how much I work this franchise. In my house, he's Uncle Dwayne. While there was creative tension on set, Diesel took responsibility for any hiccups as a producer. I protect the franchise. I I protect everybody, including Dwayne. I protected Dwayne more than he'll ever know, and mm. it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to know, but he appreciates it. He knows it. Dwayne has only got one Vin in his life. Dwayne Johnson only has one big brother in this film world, and that's me. When asked if the pair had hugged it out and made amends, Diesel responded, always, always, always. I'm always rooting for Dwayne. I'm the first multicultural megastar in Hollywood. They didn't exist. To see another multicultural star come up is something I am very proud of. I'm always rooting Dwayne on. At this point, it became quite evident that this feud is quite the ego battle. Yeah. Because while Vin's statement seems positive, there is definitely a hint of animosity. He's essentially trying to Lil Bro the Rock, which is essentially- That's literally what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, he's Lil Bro in him. He's Lil Bro in him. He's saying nice things, but if you really pay attention, he's basically like, I'm, I'm this guy. You know, he's kind of following in my footsteps. Yeah, man, we, it's all love. You know, that's my Lil Bro. He's Lil Bro in him treating him like he is inferior or has a lower social status. Even though they are nearly tied when considering worldwide box office performance, but Vin has just enough more success to be able to flex on The Rock. Not to mention, he achieved that in 16 less films. Despite Vin's sarcastic remarks, The Rock chose not to respond. What nobody knew at the time was The Rock was so fed up with Vin Diesel at this point that he decided to walk away from the Fast franchise. But first, he had an obligation to complete complete the next Fast spinoff, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw is a buddy comedy action film where Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham reprise their roles as Luke Hobbs and Deckard Shaw. Without Vin Diesel and the other characters from the main franchise, mm -hmm. Johnson and Statham received much needed breathing room to fully flesh out their characters. Hobbs and Shaw was a huge commercial success, earning over $760 million Ooh. worldwide. It was also around this time that the Wall Street Journal reported that Vin Diesel and The Rock both have contractual clauses that explicitly say they cannot lose a fight in movies. Wow. Michael Fattel, a producer, confirmed that I fight scenes that. were choreographed beforehand to ensure they didn't end up too one-sided. During a scene in 2017's Fate of the Furious, Dwayne Johnson apparently had the script tweaked to have his character sit down on the floor instead of lying after taking a beating during one fight, mm -hmm. because The Rock never lays down. Yeah. It was reports like this that slowly chipped That's away at funny. The Rock's near-perfect reputation. But nobody seemed to criticize Vin Diesel for doing the exact same thing, and perhaps that bothered Dwayne even more. During the promotion for F9, Diesel did an interview with Men's Health where he admitted to using tough love on set when it came to Johnson's portrayal of Hobbs. It was a tough character to embody, the Hobbs character. My approach at the time was a lot of tough love to assist in getting that performance where it needed to be. As a producer to say, okay, we're gonna take Dwayne Johnson, who's associated with wrestling, and we're going to force this cinematic world, audience members, to regard his character as someone that they don't know. Hobbs hits you like a ton of bricks. That's something I'm proud of. Yet again, on the surface, it seems like Vin is praising The Rock, but it could be interpreted that he is literally taking credit for yeah. Johnson's role. Yeah. He's basically saying that if he wasn't the producer, then Dwayne would not have performed the role as Hobbs good enough. Yeah. What we know for a fact is that The Rock was not very fond of Vin's comments. Telling Vanity Fair, one part of me feels like there's no way I would dignify any of that bull with an answer. The Rock then addressed the Instagram post that he made in 2016, five years ago, that started this whole feud. He said the post caused a firestorm, yet interestingly enough, it was as if every single crew member found their way to me and either quietly thanked me or sent me a note. But yeah, it wasn't my best day. He said, I shouldn't have shared that, because at the end of the day, that goes against my DNA. I don't share things like that, and I take care of that kind of bullshit. 
away from the public. They don't need to know that. That's why I say it wasn't my best day. He stood behind his previous comments, but he did reiterate that sharing his displeasure for Vin Diesel was not the right thing to do. He mentioned again the alleged meeting with Vin in his trailer, where he said that him and Diesel are philosophically two different people, and we approach the business of movie making in two very different ways. Still, Johnson held resentment towards his co-star, and he denounced Diesel's big brother comments. I've been around the block a lot of times. Unlike him, I did not come from the world of theater. And you know, I came up differently and was raised differently. And I came from a completely different culture and environment. And I go into every project giving it my all. And if I feel that there's some things that need to be squared away and handled and taken care of, then I do it. And it's just that simple. So when I read that, just like everybody else, I laughed. I laughed hard. Clearly, whatever happened between Johnson and Diesel was never really resolved. Mm. And as future film centered more around Vin Diesel, The Rock decided to make his exit. In July of 2021, Johnson revealed to the world that he would not be returning to the main franchise while speaking to The Hollywood Reporter. I wish them well on Fast 9, and I wish them the best of luck on Fast 10 and Fast 11 and the rest of the Fast and Furious movies they do that will be without me. And four months after Johnson said that he's never coming back, Vin Diesel made an Instagram post where he begged him to rejoin the franchise. My little brother Dwayne the time has come the yeah it's the little brother stuff it's so that is very petty y'all that's very that's that's a way to send a shot at you in the most subtle way but it's petty as hell. My little brother. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is not a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes, but the time has come. I say this out of love, but you must show up. Do not leave the franchise idle. You have a very important role to play. Hobbs can't be played by no other. I hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. The Rock was tired of being lil bro'd by Vin Diesel, Diesel and yeah. it really seems like Vin is continuing to troll him. Yeah. Saying The Rock needs to fulfill his destiny yeah, is making it seem like The Rock playing this it. role for the seventh time is like some sort of major career milestone. As if his movie career would crash and burn if he was not in Fast 10. This post made by Vin Diesel backfired, and it pushed The Rock even further away. Johnson claimed he was very surprised by Vin's recent post during an interview with CNN. This past June, when Vin and I actually connected, not over social media, I told him directly and privately that I would not be returning to the franchise. I was firm yet cordial with my words and said that I would always be supportive of the cast and always root for the franchise to be successful, but that there was no chance I would return. He specifically didn't like how Vin Vin mentioned his children in the post. I guess he's not Uncle Dwayne after all. Unfortunately for The Rock, reality slapped him in the face. It became abundantly clear that The Rock needed the Fast franchise more than he realized. In 2021, Dwayne appeared opposite Emily Blunt in the fantasy adventure film Jungle Cruise, which was a box office bomb. Yeah. With an estimated combined production and promotional cost of $365 million, the film needed to gross around $500 million worldwide in order to break even, but fell short at 221 million. Then Johnson appeared in another uh, box office bomb in the man. form of Black Adam, a 2022 superhero film that Variety estimated needed 600 million dollars to break even, Not falling even short once again at 393 million dollars worldwide. The failure of Black Adam was particularly bothersome for fans because he used his status to obtain a classic Marvel story that had never been brought to the big screen, only to dilute the character and turn him into another movie stroke the rock's ego did he say marvel <laughs> he did say marvel y'all i just want to make sure marvel hey you may have miss messed up just a little bit on the research there <laughs> this is a dc character it's not marvel at all of Black Adam was particularly bothersome for fans because he used his status to obtain a classic Marvel story that had never been brought to the big screen, only to dilute the character and turn him into another. Unless he means Marvel as a, like a, a, it was supposed to be a marvelous story, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm trying to give him some bail, but I don't know. I could have misinterpreted. Y'all let me, I misinterpreted misinterpreted that i'm fucking up myself i don't know like y'all let me know did he mean like as a marvelous story or he actually meant to 
think that this was a Marvel character because he's not. He's a DC guy. Other movie stroking the rock's ego. Black Adam was supposed to be a dark, sinister anti-hero. Yeah. The reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe has become such a massive success around the world is because of how all of the characters can tie together. The rock did not care about how the character fits. Oh yeah, no, nah, I don't know where he got Marvel from. Yeah. <laughs> and he keeps saying it as yeah. It's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He wants to be the universe. But The Rock's universe is a repetitive, predictable movie where he plays the macho man with a kind heart who never loses a fight, never dies, and always concludes with a happy ending. People were simply fed up with The Rock and the way he ruined Black Adam, which led to people comfortably and confidently just speaking out about all of the other things they despised about him, mm -hmm. like his tendency to tell absurd lies. When it comes to food, diet, and his uh, health and wellness, he seems we to exaggerate quite a bit. I can tell you with a little bit of uncertainty because I failed math, I was probably at that time ingesting about anywhere between six to well, I would say possible almost 8,000 calories a day. He set the internet on fire when he claimed that he eats six to 8,000 calories per day. For someone as dedicated as he is to his diet and exercise, achieving a near perfect physique at 52 years old, he should know exactly how much he is eating per day. But countless experts were just not convinced that The Rock was telling the truth. I can tell you there is no way The Rock burns off enough calories to average six to 8,000 calories a day and look like this. If he actually ate those kind of calories, six to 8,000 a day, he would be 100 pounds overweight. There is no way he yeah. eats this much. Naturally, this opened the door for people to discuss the other elephant in the room. Does The Rock use steroids? Yeah, yeah. After all, he is 52 years old, 260 pounds, with only 7% body fat. That's a crazy. physique that most people half his age couldn't achieve naturally. He admitted to using steroids for two weeks when he was 18 and then never touched them again. And yet, health experts and previous steroid users were convinced he was lying. The Rock is not natural, okay? The Rock, is he's not a patient of mine, so I don't worry about getting sued. Yeah, we're going to be talking about what steroid cycle I think The Rock uses. Perhaps I'm crushing people's dreams saying I don't believe The Rock's natural, but hey, here in the real world, you don't look like The Rock at 50 without taking something. One yeah. of the more strange lies that The Rock told was when he tried to convince the world that he never had In-N-Out Burger oh, yeah. three times. In 2017, The Rock posted an Instagram photo at the In-N-Out drive through with the caption, I've never been to In-N-Out before, and then goes on to describe his delicious meal. Then five years later, he posted a video seemingly forgetting about he his forgot. 2017 experience. And the reason why this is history in the making is because this is the very first time that I have ever tried an In-N-Out burger. No, it's not. Or In-N-Out fries or no, anything from In-N-Out for that matter. Then 15 months later, he posted for the third time saying that this was his very no, first In-N-Out in -out burger, burger experience. Yeah. This is the third time he's done it. He keeps pretending that he's trying In-N-Out for the first time every couple of years. Why? Why are you lying about that? You could just say like, I love In-N-Out, so I'm going back to In-N-Out. Yeah. Let's go. Can't wait for more In-N-Out. That's it. Why does it always have to be your first time? We know it's not. It appears that the first picture was actually his first time going. The second post was clearly an attempt to advertise his tequila brand. Yeah. And the third attempt was just, well, The Rock being The Rock. There is no exact reason as to why he lies about these things, but it seems to revolve around him being hyper-focused on creating this larger-than-life brand as The Rock. If you follow his Instagram, you will realize that The Rock wakes up earlier than anyone, eats more food than anyone, works <laughs> out more than anyone, travels the world, does hundred million dollar movies. The Rock does everything bigger and better, but he throws in little jokes and posts his Sunday cheat meals to let you know he is still human and you can relate to him. Then he can use that charm to sell you his newest movie, his tequila, the XFL, or whatever brand is paying him for an advertisement. He doesn't even seem like a human anymore. He seems like an AI version of Dwayne Johnson created in a lab to be a walking, talking advertisement, and people just simply got tired of it. After the two colossal movie failures and his public reputation at an all-time low, The Rock conveniently decided to settle his differences with his big bro Vin Diesel, <laughs> after he said he never wanted to work on the Fast franchise again, and that he and Vin Diesel are just fundamentally two different men who will never see eye to eye, he posted a video on Instagram saying he was going to return for Fast. Fast X. So I am 100% <laughs> confirming to you guys around the world that yes, 
it is true. Hobbs is back. Hobbs is back in the Fast and Furious franchise. So in terms of the why, I think, you know, when you, d despite us having our differences, me and Vin, you know, we've been like brothers for years. And despite having our differences, when you lead with the idea of number one, resolve, but then also you just think about the future and you think about plans that are much bigger than ourselves. When The Rock desperately needed a career revival the most, Vin Diesel and the Fast franchise were happy to bring him back into the family. I guess this proves The Rock was Vin Diesel's little brother after all. <laughs> That's crazy. The final boss is not the final boss in comparison to Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel is the final boss in movies, at least in the Fast and Furious franchise. That's crazy. This was a great one, man. Y'all go, I'm a, uh, hold on. I, I want y'all to go subscribe to the channel. We've checked out one of these videos before. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> that was from the live stream. Let me make myself smaller. Actually, make, my, make myself disappear. Y'all go so uh, subscribe to Patrick CC. I'm gonna like this video. He does some great like documentary style type vids that I, I think a lot of y'all would appreciate. We've already checked out one where he talked about the downfall of uh, Vince McMahon. Uh, a while back earlier this year so definitely go check this out this was a great watch hopefully y'all enjoyed it comment down below let me know some other wrestling related videos y'all want me to check out i definitely will appreciate all the love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace